In this video, we're going to take a quick look at the UI changes in 3D Coat 2021. The first thing you'll notice on the left hand side is the difference in the tool panel where you have all new icons. If you click this toggle, you'll notice that you can change the scale as well as change to icons only or text only. Another thing that you'll notice is in the upper left hand corner, you previously had workspace tabs. Those are removed in order to help consolidate and clean up the overall clutter in the UI. Instead, you can go to this list menu and select the different workspace you want to work in. If you want to make this more efficient, you might want to go ahead and assign hotkeys to the workspaces that you most frequently use. For example, I assign many of the F keys to the different workspaces. To do this, you simply hover over the workspace you want to choose, then hit the end key on your keyboard, that's E-N-D, and that will allow you to make the assignment. Once that's done, you can now switch back and forth between the different rooms just using your hotkeys. Okay, so now I'm back in the scope workspace. Another thing to take note of is that you now have a full array of surface brushes available when your layer is in voxel mode as indicated by the V icon on the left side of the layer. Previously, you only had a few surface brushes and they were stored well at the bottom of the tool panel. This kept them mostly out of sight and not very practical to use. That's since been changed. They've been relocated right beneath the voxel brushes. This also includes access to using surface brush presets. So if you have polished brushes, for example, that you like to use whenever you are working with surface brushes, you can use those as well. I won't get into the ins and outs of that. We have a video that covers some of this in detail, but needless to say, this provides a hybrid working environment, meaning you can comfortably work in voxel mode. And if at any point in time you prefer to use a surface brush, you can quickly switch to it. And as you are working with surface brushes, it will store sculpt layer information. Working with voxel brushes does not, however, because you're working with volumetric pixels. Keep in mind when you are working with surface brushes that should you decide to switch back to a voxel brush, you will probably notice a slight pause. That's because it needs to revoxelize the entire object. If you are sculpting with surface brushes and you don't need to go back to a voxel brush, you can switch to surface mode on your layer and whatever sculpt information that was stored will be maintained. Let me show an example here. Let's say I'm using a voxel build brush. Now, if I were to try and hide that layer, it's obvious I have no sculpt layer information. If I switch to a clay brush, I'll just switch to a clay preset. This time, when I try to hide the sculpt layer, you will notice how it indeed stored the information. So now if I want to switch back to surface mode, that layer information will be maintained. I can adjust the depth opacity at any point. The next thing I want to bring to your attention is the activity bar. And what this does is it allows the user to expand the assets they are hovering over. So for example, with the shaders, I can instantly expand it. Whereas if I were to select it here, I would have to scroll through. It can be a bit tedious, so it's much faster to just go to your activity bar and then select your shader. Same thing with your brushes, your brush options, strips, stencils, models, and then presets. Another major difference is the camera menu. Previously, you had a list menu here. It now resides when you click this little camera icon. It exposes that menu. 
And also you'll notice your navigation bar will disappear when you move your cursor away. The closer you get to it, it will now reappear. Okay, so that's going to conclude this quick look at the UI changes in 3D Coat 2021. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.